Claudio Pierce wrote this song for the volunteers who took up arms to win our freedom and to take from England what they would not give. And when Padre Pierce wrote this ballad, he wrote it to inspire. No man inspired the people more than Padre Pierce. He was a great orator. He was a man that encapsulated all that's good when speaking to the public. Anyone that I've met that have heard him speak during my lifetime and those indeed that were close to him in, during his life have all commented on the way he spoke. I think the gift of fiery speech was something that James Connolly had and it set him apart. But Paul Trude Pierce had that gift as well. And he was seen by many as the embodiment of the 1916 rebellion. He was a teacher, a poet, a writer, and a political activist, all in one. And it's doubtful, uh, without his inspiration, uh, whether the, the 1916 rebellion would have happened that Easter. Padraig Pierce knew full well that the population of Ireland had been demoralised and humiliated by the policies of the British government in the 19th century. You only have to look at what has been written about the policies that were pursued by the British government by those historians who look at the honest truth. Kirby Miller, a historian in America, looked at the 19th century and laid the blame squarely on the doorstep of the British government for the extermination of so many people under their rule. It has to be remembered the reason that these men and Padre Pierce took up arms in 1916 was desperation. They had seen the population of Ireland go from almost 10 million in 1839 to a fraction of that in 1914. They witnessed every year millions of people deposed out of this country, dispersed and dispossessed. And this pained anyone that cared and loved Ireland to see such a hemorrhage of its most powerful asset, its people. I've always believed since my youngest days in studying the history of Ireland that Ireland and our country has not recovered from the trauma of the extermination of the millions during the famine of 1840, 50 and 60. In fact, there was no famine in Ireland. There was no shortage of food. It's only the, the food that was available, the poor of Ireland couldn't afford to buy it and it was shipped out of the country to feed the British army that were stationed terrorising the world and many peoples across every continent of this globe. So, to understand why Padraig Pierce, Thomas Clark, James Connolly, Thomas Macdonough, Joseph Plunkett, and why these men took up arms, you have to understand that the Ireland they were brought into, and they were born into, one of destitution, misery, emigration, no hope, no industry, nothing of consequence in the 19th century uh, while the rest of Europe was developing an, an industrial revolution. Nothing of consequence was brought into this country by the government in London, who, by the way, were considered by many around the world the most powerful and the wealthiest nation of the world. So. It was obvious to those men and women of that generation that things would not change unless there was action from the people themselves. They had looked at other nations that the English authority had been responsible for. They looked at the north of Scotland and seen it devoid and denuded of people, nobody living there. The people were confined to cities and the small remnants of populations in the, in the northern parts of the country. Totally depopulated. The people lay scattered all over the world.
and they proposed to do the same to Ireland. In fact, it, the English press during the 19th century delighted in the fact that so many people indeed were starving in Ireland. It was ridding them of the, the parasite population of this country. But Padraig Pearce and Thomas McDonough and Tom Clark, uh, they, they couldn't bear any more of that torture and watch the people demoralised. And I've always said that those men and women of 1916 did more than just die for Ireland and devote their lives to Ireland. They also gave back to our country our self-respect, our self-esteem and our dignity. And most importantly, I think that they should be remembered in our history books as the people that ended the carnage and of, our, of our country. When I first started singing was back in the early 1960s and it was around 1964, 65 and 66 with the 50th anniversary of the Easter Rebellion coming up we sought to celebrate it and commemorate it but I found when I was travelling around Ireland that it was only half a loaf I was travelling in the north of Ireland in the six counties and many people I talked to indeed didn't see any reason for celebration because they had been indeed separated from the rest of the country in a deliberate sectarian and racist state that was designed to have no nationalist indeed voice in that six county entity and all Ulster men I think would agree that the partition of Ireland was a disgrace and something that the country not herself ever wanted. But the partition of Ulster was a further disgrace because it cut off three of the finest counties, Donegal, Monaghan and Cavan, from our natural hinterland, indeed of the north and Belfast and the ports in, in that region. So there was two partitions of our country. So coming up to 1966, that was a very, very powerful thought for people in the north of Ireland. They felt isolated, without representation, because for any Irishman to consider uh, that the interests of Ireland would be considered by the Westminster Parliament would be a fool. And I think that's best described it by uh, William James McNevin, the, the doctor and the father of American chemistry, the Irish patriot, who was deposed out of this country in 1803. Because James McNevin said, and the, the asked about the Act of Union and the representation of Irish people in the English Parliament in Westminster, he said these words. He said that only a fool would sit in the Westminster Parliament in the expectation that the interests of Ireland would be considered. He said, the entire body of all Irish representatives from the 32 counties would have less clout in Westminster than the representative of the smallest fishing village in England. And he said those words back in 1805. But he was a man of vision, a very, very smart man with a very smart man with facts and figures and he understood the financial robbery that the Act of Union was to this country. And the, the English authority, not only did they take away the Parliament from Ireland, he said, but they also indeed robbed over 25 million pounds out of the country and they made indeed the Irish people pay for the Act of Union. He said it was it was robbery of the exchequer in Ireland, it was robbery of the country. So the men and women of Easter Week 1960 and all of them, James Connolly, Padraig Pierce, Tom Clark, they'd all read the history, they had seen the falsehoods, they'd seen the deceit, they'd seen the false promises and the, the smooth tongue 
indeed a, a deceit that's part of English diplomacy and they witnessed the humiliation of Dan O'Connell. So it was no surprise to anybody that these men and women said enough. We have to take up arms and take a stand. But as they've always said, they also indeed cared about their people. So when Padraig Pierce uh, surrendered, he knew he did not want to see any more deaths. And this is in marked contrast to those leaders in England who sent tens of thousands of young Irishmen and young Englishmen and Scotsmen into unwinnable military situations in the European war, in the First World War, the 1914-18 war. That was the most unnecessary bloodletting war in history. It should never have happened. A war between uh, two uh, monarchs over the superiority of Europe. It was a disgrace to mankind. And of course, Padraig Pierce seen it the same way. So did James Connolly and so did Tom Clark. And they took the actions that they did. And God bless them for it. They restored to our country our self-respect. And at this Easter weekend, 105 years on, we remember the mood pride with these songs.